I mean, for, first and foremost, as, as you create the drawing, um, you should first texture map it. And s some of the patterns don't... Uh, I think they're a little bit heavy for the computer, so they're not rendering it. Basically, here I used extract surface to, to map the various geometries. Um, if I select the uh, the red texture, and I go under texture mapping, and I look at show mapping, you can basically see that uh, the texture is fairly small and it's being projected off of the square. So what you end up seeing is uh, is a mapping that uh, gets distorted basically along the edges as it falls off. So for these elements because I want to highlight the stairs If you show show mapping, I use the box mapping, so you can click on the box to do this, to have a fairly uniform patterning. So now, uh, now what we'll do is we'll pick a section that works for us. Now since I've already had some time with the model, I know exactly what I want, so I set up these lines to help me. But you would have to pan around in order to in order to figure out what uh, what actually works for you. So I like this section primarily because it cuts the stairs, and you can see the interior spaces. So this this works for me. And then at the same time, I need a I need a cut for for the actual split in the view um, and this. I'll explain this later, but that's that white line there. So. And I'll use the section command this time, since Christian taught me about it. So look at that. It, uh, it produces a section. So first what we want to do is we want to cut, cut that section. Uh, where where we want it. Next we'll we'll draw these planes for reference. So we'll draw two cut planes. Then we'll put these on a section layer. So now our task is, uh, we have to orient the model so that it reads, uh, gives us the best reading. So what we'll do is we will actually copy the model. And so I know just, just from prior experience with the model that uh, we'll use this orientation for the model. So you can see kind of how, uh, if if I turn it to ghosted, how this orientation of the model is uh, will be successful because the section's at an angle, um, and you can kind of see the stairs and you can see the interior spaces. So now, let me just verify. So now it's important so that our plane is uh, is rotated so that it's facing us. Um,
So now we have this this kind of model. Um, and now we will uh, have to shear shear the model to get our reading. I'm just going to use a 45 degree shear backwards. So using left view and uh, negative, well, positive 45 degree shear. If you're using right view, it'd probably be negative. But. So this is our, our drawing so far. I'm trying to click the section here and see if it'll let me. So you can see basically how, how the section fits fits within the model. Um, so um, since we know that uh, we're, we're going to be working with a, a 45 degree shear, since we made the decision and it works for us, uh, we're, we're going to cut the model this way for the split view. So let me actually go back. And for this purpose, we'll actually take this plane and we'll rotate it at uh, 45 degrees. And the intention with this is that when you actually go to shear your model, this plane uh, which we drew is now vertical to the uh, to the camera so you can see how we'll be using these two planes to basically cut apart the model uh, and and do our split uh, do our split axon so I'll duplicate the model And my computer is having a really hard time with the graphics for this model. My desktop uh, worked much, much better. So now we're we're going to split the model. Um, so first, we're going to split it along along this plane. So we're going to run the split command should finish shortly. Does anybody have any questions so far? Are you guys happy with your split axon drawings? Are you guys happy with your models? No. A little bit. Some are, some aren't. Uh. Yeah, I think we're just about done splitting. So, I'll ungroup all of these things. So if you have lots of groups, don't forget to ungroup for this step. And then you guys all know how to use the select window commands, right? If you drag from one side to another side, you include things in the window, in the selection window, and you don't the other way. Do you guys know that? No. So uh, if if I drag the box like this, it only includes what's inside the box. You guys know that, okay? So we we group this, and now we just need to split split these guys in the other direction. So I'm sorry. This this is kind of painful, but we'll have to unshear it. 
I've determined that unsharing it and doing this is the easiest way. So now we, we just have to split these guys uh, along this, this edge. So we invert lock to, so that we're... Oh, we haven't split it yet. Um, so right now these, the, these are split uh, along one along this plane, but now we need to split it along the other plane. What are some of the issues that you guys are facing with your own models? What are some of the issues that you guys are facing, like compositionally, with your own models? Connor? I see. Um, yeah, I mean, s s same with me. I did have to go back and make mine more dense after after the first yeah. workshop. So now we do the same thing, but we split along this. So we group these guys together. And I'm just using the invert lock command. So invert first, lock second. To invert the selection and unlock the rest. So now what we have is a model that's split in, in four directions. Um, It'll, it'll be like this in our drawing. So this is the horizontal split in the view. This is the split for the section. So two splits. And now what we have to do is we have to just rotate it back into the original position. So let me save it. And then And then now finally we're going to shear it for one last time. Are you guys recognizing these steps overall from the like floor plan split axon? So I'm doing the same thing except the planes aren't actually 90 degrees to each other. Uh, since we're doing a section that's at an angle, uh, that we're then shearing it in a different way. So now we actually what we'll do is we will remove these two components. We'll just move them out of the way. We'll hide the section planes. So now, 
basically, I mean, we have something very similar to, to our floor plan, but what we're going to do is we're going to mirror the bottom portion so that we see into it. So that was like magic, right? This is a bit of a problem, actually. I lost my... Uh, I lost my section cut, but actually, oh, okay. If if I just do cell curves, since I didn't have any other curves, uh, that that brings it back. So I didn't lose it. But this is basically our drawing now. So just. Just to go over again, what, what we're doing is we're just taking this side of it and flipping it. So that, just like the worm's eye, since we're not doing a worm's eye in plan, we're doing a worm's eye in section. Just so that this uh, reads. So. And now we can see basically how the stair element continues through through the drawing and also kind of how we have the section is still there so what we'll start doing now is we'll actually start drawing this this thing so here's where it starts to get fun And hopefully a little bit faster. So we run Make2D. Also some notes, uh, is Make2D working for everybody? I heard that for some it's crashing. It works for you guys? So this, this, this is our first layer basically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make 2D the section. I don't know why there's two. That's very strange. So this is our section now. And what we'll do is we will uh, hatch it. So, using curve boolean and then hatch. Uh, and then some some areas of it aren't closed, so you can close them up. If you're reasonably sure that they should be. Oh, this one misses it just barely. So now that we have these hatches, uh, we have them on the hatch layer. We can position that on top of the drawing. So it's very similar to, to the split split axon plan that we were working on, except for now it's a section. Also, a quick note for Make 2D: just make sure that your unit tolerance is high enough if you're working in feet. Uh, if you have a very small object and you're working with 0 0.01, I think this was your problem. Um, make 2D won't run accurately because it isn't able to discern the difference between like an inch and two inches. So any intersection, it, it doesn't register it because it's it falls beneath the tolerance. So just make sure it's high enough. Yes. I mean, that that has some, some to do with it. Uh, another issue, I think that's also just graphics issue. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's Rhino's processing issue. It's not able to figure out the intersection properly. Um, if you ask me, no. I don't know. I don't really have one. Um, 
I mean, unit proper unit tolerance helps a lot. Uh, but but still, I mean, you'll get artifacts when you make to D anyway. Um, so. So now we will use a a hidden layer for these. So we'll do a line called hidden. Make it gray. You can actually change the line type in here. So when you export to Illustrator, it'll actually be dashed already. Um, although you'll still probably need to change the, the, the stroke and whatnot. So we'll make to do these lines for, for a hidden. So here's how it matches up, basically. Just add some graphical density and confusion. Confusion, confusion is always great in architectural drawing, by the way. I'm just kidding. That's a. Uh, but for for this kind of drawing that we're doing, I think misreading is is perfectly fine. That's what the split axon's about, anyway. Um, So now what we need to do is we need to start extracting uh, additional information from, from this guy. So I'll select this, I'll put it under section, actually. So I'll take these. I just, I just basically patch some of these holes up. And then I'll get an arctic view of this. So now that we have this view, we'll go to document properties display modes. We'll actually take Arctic and duplicate it. So it'll be called copy of Arctic. Um, so background, we will do transparent, transparent background for Arctic. So now you can see that uh, we modified our our screenshot render to have uh, to have a transparent background. So we'll run the view capture to file command. So we'll do a fairly good resolution, like four thousand. We won't do any of those. Um, we'll use a PNG for the transparency. Um, so we'll call this base render. I assume it's writing because my computer doesn't move. Hopefully it didn't crash. Yeah, it's still running. Still running. Okay, it wrote it finally. So here's what we have for our base render. It's not terrible, right? We will also put in our rendered mode, and we'll do a similar thing.
So it's important for the view capture to file command that you don't run it with the dash. In Rhino 6, um, yeah, no dash for the command. So I also want to actually capture this guy. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but I really like the way this texture lands over here. So we'll also run the same command on this. So I'll call this one the, the the missing half one. The top one? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it just didn't work because the it w they weren't like clean closed curves. I'm just trying to save as much time as I can so that you guys don't have an hour long tutorial, but it's it's going to be an hour long. It's unavoidable. Um, even though I rehearsed this one a lot more, but it just still takes takes a lot of time. So for, for these guys, um, we'll clean it up a little bit. So any of these kinds of lines, you don't really, you don't really need them. So just be mindful of the lines that you do and you don't need. I'm not going to remove all of them, but... Then you can use extend command, fill it. So... So now we'll export this first to Illustrator. And here's where the fun starts. Um, So my model is in feet, feet to one inch. 